Welcome to the Merchant Interface 101 webinar. Today we're going to be going through the ins and outs of your merchant account, taking a look at the various sections uh, that are listed at the very top of the page when you do log in. We're going to get started by me sharing my screen here today. At this time you should be looking at what is the home page of your merchant account. At the very top of the page you'll see the activity feed. So this activity feed is going to show you any new transactions that come in, any affiliate logins, any program view alerts. So just things that you should be aware of that do happen within the account. This will be listed in chronological order. Over to the right, you'll also be able to see just some program stats. You can filter this to the day, the week, or the month. Up above that is where you'll be able to log out, or you can go to the Help Center. The Help Center is where you'll be able to submit a ticket to our support staff here at ShareASale, and you'll be able to view previous tickets that you've had with us. As you scroll down, you'll see that there is this little chart for the gross sales in the last 30 days. Some additional charts as well as these customizable panels. So these are things that you're able to remove. You can edit so you can add to do items. You can add them back in. You can place them where it makes the most sense to you. So down here is where you can completely customize this section of the account. Up here, you'll see your merchant account name, the ID number. These are both good information just to know, to have when you are emailing in or if you are calling in so that we can easily pull up your account. The balance of your account, so this is the account balance that is being used to pay the commission to your affiliates as they are bringing in sales. You can view any saved reports that you have. You can head to the Program Boost section, which we'll go over when we get to the Tools section. And again, you can get to the Help Center of your account. Above where it says Saved Reports, if you have any pending affiliate applications that have come in, you will be able to see the number of applications that are ready for you to review. You can click right on that and it will take you to the Pending Affiliate list where you can approve or decline those affiliates as needed. Now we're going to take a look at the My Account section. So we'll first go to My Account and then go to Account Details. On the Account Details page, you can scroll down and you'll be able to see your account information. So that contact information that can be updated as needed. You can add additional emails to the account. And when you do so, you can provide them with various different permissions. Under this Manage Features section, you'll be able to quickly access the Auto Deposit, which will also be found under Deposit Center. So Auto Deposit is going to be a great way for you to keep your account balance above zero dollars, make sure that your account is fully funded and online. Should your account balance dip below zero dollars, your account will be taken offline, which means that any affiliate links that are out there will no longer function. If a potential customer does happen upon those affiliate links and clicks on it, they will receive an error message. So you definitely want to make sure that your customers aren't receiving any error messages when they click on these links. You want to make sure that you are online, your account balance is above that zero dollars, so that you can pay those commissions to the affiliates when they generate sales for you. To keep your account balance online, you can make a manual deposit. You can make that manual deposit by credit card, e-check, or PayPal. And then you also have the option to turn on auto deposit. Auto deposit can be set up using credit card or e-check. And you, when you are setting that up, you will click into the update auto deposit settings you will set a low balance trigger. So this means that anytime your account balance dips below that low balance trigger, 
that you will be making that deposit into the account balance. You will also set the amount that the deposit will be that we will be taking from the credit card or by e-check. Again, auto deposit is just going to be something that is super easy to set up and it just helps keep you online. It's also something that affiliates do look for when they are looking for new programs to join. When they are searching for new merchant programs that they want to join, they can filter out any merchants that do not have auto deposit on. So in addition to just really helping you keep your account running smoothly, it's also going to help with any recruitment efforts in the future. Back to that account details section, you'll also be able to set up any additional logins for the account. You can set up text alerts if you would like. You can set up what your email notifications are going to be. And you can set up the affiliate approval, whether you would like to auto approve all affiliates that come in, if you would like to have them all sent to pending, if you would like to approve by country, and if you would like to accept incentive sites. I would always recommend that you do select to have all of your affiliates go to pending if you are comfortable with that so that you can review each application as it does come into the account to determine if they are going to be a good fit for your program. Up at the top of the page is where your commission rate is set and your tracking gap is set. You can edit these at any time if you would like. Please just note that if you do make any edits to the default commission rate or your tracking gap, that an automated email is going to be sent to your affiliates, notifying them of that change. This affiliate recruitment URL, if we click on that, is something that you can set, send to potential affiliates that you are communicating with outside the network uh, if they would like to be signing up for your program. All they have to do is quickly sign up as an affiliate, it is completely free to do. Once they have launched on the network, then an application will be automatically sent to your program. The information on this page is going to come directly from this main logo here under my account, and then your program bio. So the program bio is found under my account, Affiliate Communications. So the program bio is what is set up right here. In this section, you can include just plain text or you can utilize HTML. If you have HTML, all you would do is place the code into this box here. You can preview it and then you'll be able to update that at any time. Once it is updated, you will be able to see the update automatically on this recruitment URL. Also under affiliate communications is going to be your affiliate agreement. So the affiliate agreement is going to be really just the terms and conditions for your program that you want your affiliates to agree to. So if you have any restrictions on how they can promote you, uh, anything regarding coupon usage, PPC, anything like that, it does need to be contained within this affiliate agreement. Just like the program bio, you can use HTML in this section for any formatting. Uh, when you go to view the affiliate agreement, you will see your current agreement here. If you scroll down, this is where you will enter in your new agreement. You can include a summary of changes, so just quick bullet points that the affiliates can read, letting them know exactly what was changed when you made that update, and then the effective date. While everything else in the account, as soon as you click to update, it will be updated automatically. The affiliate agreement does not go into effect until at least seven days after you have updated it. So you can set it to go into effect even later than that. However, the soonest it will be able to go into effect is seven days after the update. This is to alert the affiliates that these changes have been made, allow them to read through the agreement, and then determine if they would like to remain in the program, signing off on these terms or not. Next to the affiliate agreement is going to be the search keywords section. 
Search keywords are how affiliates are able to locate you within their interface. So when the affiliate logs in, they can go to view the merchants within the network. They can drill in by if they have auto deposit on or not. They can drill in if you have a data feed or not, which we'll go through in the creative section. They can drill into the specific category so that you have set up for your merchant program. And then they can search by keywords. So when they're searching by keywords, they will simply type in any keyword that comes to mind for them. And if you have that set up in your search keyword section, you will be contained in the list that does pull up for them. You can add up to 255 characters in this section here. If you're looking to save characters so that you can add additional keywords, so if I have this in here, I'm going to do test one, test two. This space in between the comma is not necessary. I can remove that, saving additional characters that I can use for keywords later on in this list. I would suggest that you keep the keyword section to maybe just one keyword or two keyword phrases. The lengthier the keyword phrase is, the less likely it is that the affiliate is going to type in that full phrase. So again, just keeping it to either one keyword or two keyword phrases if possible. The email responder section is going to be the emails that affiliates respond automatically when they are signing up for your program. Again, you can use HTML in this section which you can then use for formatting, you can add images, you can really make it feel like it is on brand for your program. So when an affiliate applies, they will automatically receive this apply email. If there is no information, there is no copy in this section here, they are still going to receive an email. It's just going to be completely blank. So you definitely wanna make sure that there's information in here. If they are declined, they will receive your declined email that you have set up here. And if they are approved, they will receive the approval email. The approval email is something that you'll want to take additional time on to make sure that it is has the look and feel of a welcome kit for your affiliates. You can include information related to products, any promotions that you have running right now, any incentives for the affiliate specifically can be all included within this approval email. You'll notice that within this account here that we've made use of some of the macros. So if we click to view the macros, these can all be used within these emails. Specifically down here towards the bottom is where we will have the option to include macros for your creative section. So you can include links that the affiliate can use right away that is coming directly from the creative section for your program. So that's a quick and easy way for them to grab that link and begin promoting you right away. Also under the My Account section is going to be the Commission Portal. So the Commission Portal is going to give you the full breakdown of all of the various commissions you have set for your program. So currently right now this program only has the program default rate set. That is going to be set at that 8%. There are three different types of commissions that can be set up. These standard commissions. So these are really just quick and easy things that can be easily changed within your account. Typically that would be something that you would be doing on your own with no assistance from the share sale team. The intermediate commissions. So these are going to kind of play into the various commissions you might already have set in the standard ones. Uh, you can still be setting these up on your own. However, some of them you might want to reach out to the share sale team so that we can walk you through the steps in order to get those set up properly. And then advanced. So these are going to be the ones that the share sale team will be setting up for you on your behalf after we've worked through exactly what you would like set up. You'll notice that as I click into the different commission sections that they do fall into these various specific sections within the commission hierarchy. 
So all of the commissions that you are setting do, do run on a hierarchy where everything at the bottom is going to trump everything above it. So this means that the program default is going to be the last thing that is run. However, if you have individual commission rules, those are going to be what is taken into consideration when that comes through. If there are no individual commission rules that match up with the transaction, we'll go back down the commission hierarchy until we find one that does apply. We've already taken a look at the deposit center, but just a reminder that it can be accessed from any of these specific sections, or you can go to my account and then click into the deposit center. The next section we're going to cover is going to be the tools section. So as I mentioned when we were going through the affiliate agreement, I mentioned if you have any PPC restrictions that you would want to include that there. So under tools, if you go to PPC bidding rules, this is another section within the account that you all will also want to list out any of these restrictions in order for it to be that legally binding agreement it does need to be included in the affiliate agreement itself however this tool is here it's going to provide the affiliates with an easy to read format for the restrictions that you do have set up so in here, you'll add any of the keywords that you do have those restrictions on. You can view or edit the current keyword list that you have set up. And then you can also set up keyword monitoring. So you can set up keyword monitoring from here or under tools, you'll go to monitor search keywords. ShareSale will monitor up to five keywords for you. Uh, so we will be monitoring Google, Bing, and Yahoo. And again, up to five keywords we will be monitoring on your behalf. We do check these different search engines at various times throughout the day. And if you'll be able to see the report within this interface once we have concluded that check. If there's anything that we notice that might be off, we will send an email to the email address on file for your account, notifying you of what we have found. Also under tools is going to be that program boost section that I mentioned on the home page. So the program boost section is just going to be where you can review and purchase any placements that you would like for your program to get you in front of various affiliates. So these placements are going to be interface placements. So these are going to be the ones that are found within the affiliate interface. And then under the client services tab, these are going to be the placements that you can purchase within the share sale marketing channels. So it's not necessarily going to be within the interface, but it will still be getting you in front of the various affiliates in the network. There are some under client services that are not necessarily going to be those placements that are going to get you in front of the affiliates, but they are going to assist you with your program. Those two are going to be the diagnostics check up here. So the diagnostics check is going to get you a report that has been completed by a member of our share sale client support staff. We will send you that report along with various suggestions for your program. And then you can schedule a call with us to go through that report and ask any questions about that or anything else in your account. The other one that is going to be primarily just for you as a merchant is going to be this program academy. The program academy is a course that has been designed for new merchants, new account managers, or someone who is just looking to gain additional information about how to manage their merchant program. It will go through the ins and outs of everything you could want to know. Um, it will dive further in depth than this webinar is going today, uh, just about what needs to be set up, how to maintain an account, what you need to be doing in the future. All of that will be covered in the Program Academy. The last one in the client services tab that I just want to call attention to is going to be this recruitment tool. So this recruitment tool is something that you can unlock completely for free 
All we ask is that you do sign an agreement with ShareASales stating that you will remain on the network for one full year. During that year, you will have access to this tool where you can search through the affiliates in the network. You can design that invitation for them and send that out to them when you've decided that you are ready to invite them to join your program. So again, while all of these other various program boosts are going to come at a cost, that recruitment tool is completely free. Once you've purchased any of these programs, under the My Programs tab is where you'll be able to see that program boost, and you'll be able to see data for how that program boost did. Next, we'll be going to the Creative section here. So the Creative section is where you will be uploading a data feed. So I mentioned that affiliates can filter by if you have auto deposit turned on or not. They can also filter if you have a data feed or not. So the data feed is just going to be a spreadsheet that you upload with the list of all of the products available to be purchased on your website. This is something that is extremely important to affiliates. It allows them access to some specific tools within their account. Uh, it provides them with product links that they can easily pull. They can see all of that information on each individual product so that they can promote those to their readers. Uh, a step further than just uploading this data feed here would be to keep that updated on a regular basis. Affiliates can see when you have last updated your data feed, so they definitely want to make sure that you are updating it on a regular basis, making sure that they are pulling the most up-to-date and relevant information. They want to make sure that when they pull that product link that that product is still available. So updating it on at least a monthly basis is what is recommended. When you're ready to upload a data feed, you can download the example file. There is a specific format that ShareASale does require. And then you can also view the data feed requirements. So while this list of the columns is very long and lengthy, we do not require that all of these columns are filled out when you are uploading your data feed. There are only six columns that are mandatory. And those are going to be column one, the SKU number, column three, the URL, column four, the price, column nine, the category, column 10, the subcategory, and column 14, your merchant ID number. So quickly again, those six required columns for the data feed are the SKU number, the URL to the product, the price, the category, the subcategory, and the merchant ID number. Once you have completed your data feed file, you're ready to upload it. You'll just go to Creatives, Data Feed, and click to upload that new data feed at that time. Also under Creatives is going to be where you can upload banners. So banners are going to be images of varying sizes that you will be uploading that affiliates can pull and place on their website. Within this, like I said, you can upload various different sizes for them. You can include different imagery. You can include different calls to action. Uh, it can be drilled down to different category banners. It can be just a general banner such as this one where it's pretty much just going to be the logo It's up to you exactly what you would like to place on these banners. However, the more options that you are able to provide to your affiliates, the better, so that they can log into their account, they can locate exactly what they need and pull that link right away. You can also upload text links in this section here. Text links are going to be links that you will add to your program with recommended text that you would like your affiliates to be using for when the customer is going to click on that link. So you can post links 
to just your main homepage. You can include links to any categories that you have set up on your website. If you want to include additional product links in addition to the data feed, you can do that here. If you have different landing pages, such as maybe a sale page that you want them to go to, you can also include that here. Similar to banners, the more the merrier, making sure that you do have links that your affiliates can pull to all of the various pages on your website. The coupon database is where you'll be able to add any coupon codes that you have set up that you would like your affiliates to be promoting. You can also include any deals that don't require a coupon code for your affiliates. So if you have it set up that there is going to be free shipping on a specific dollar amount and above, no coupon code is required or anything like that. It just applies automatically. You can still include that here so that your affiliates can be promoting that deal to their readers. For all of these different creatives, you are able to go through and make the creative public, which means it is public for all affiliates, or you can make that private. So when you make this private, you can make it private for just one affiliate. You can make it private for a specific tag or a specific group that you have set up within your program. Something that is going to be an extra step above when you're adding a coupon code is when you make it private for one affiliate, you can also turn on forced exclusivity. So forced exclusivity is going to pop up when you make it private for that one affiliate. Turning this on means that any time that coupon code is used, so forced exclusivity can only be turned on when there is a coupon code. So when it's turned on, any time that coupon code is used, that affiliate it is private for will receive commission for that sale. So this means that even if the customer clicked from another affiliate website, or if no affiliate click occurred, that one affiliate it is private for would receive commission on that sale. This is going to be a very popular option if you're working with uh, maybe some influencers or people who have social media websites. Uh, I know that sometimes these types of affiliates do prefer that they can just promote one specific coupon code instead of adding these links. So this is a really easy way for you to provide that option to them. This does require that you have coupon code tracking set up for your program. So if you would like to have this set up so that you can update coupon codes with forced exclusivity, please reach out to us so that we can assist you with adding that coupon code tracking to your program. You can reach out to us through the Help Center, which can be accessed on the left-hand side or in the upper right corner, or you can email us at sharesale at sharesale.com, which is listed down here, and our phone number, 312-321-0487. You can also call us there, and we can assist you with all of this. The fourth section here is going to be the affiliate section. So we're first going to go to your affiliate list. So this is a list of all of the affiliates that have been approved into your program. So these affiliates can come into their account. They can access the various creatives you have uploaded. They can be promoting your program at any time. Some things that you'll see when you are in the affiliate list is going to be that on each affiliate, there's information for them so you're able to see their affiliate ID number, their website. You can update them from approved to declined at any time if you would like. You can see if they are a member of an affiliate group. If you'd like to set up affiliate groups, you can do so up here where it says view create affiliate groups. You can see what their commission rate is set at, where they're located and when they apply to your program. You can also click on this graph to see some quick program stats for that affiliate. And then you can also click on this tag icon. So in addition to creating affiliate groups, you can also create affiliate tags. Both of these are 
available within your program so that you can organize the affiliates in a way that makes sense to you. Again, you can set up those creatives so that they are private for a tag or for a group. Something that you can do with affiliate tags that you cannot do with groups is you can set up specific commission rules for those tags. So this is an option that is going to be available to you, those commission rules, if you have affiliate tags set up within the account. So when you click on that tag icon, you can see that there's an option to add tag. Any tags that I have set up for my program will pop up here and I can quickly add that to the affiliate. The affiliate is not able to see these tags just like they are not able to see if they are a member of a group within your program. You can also create new tags as needed. The tags can be used again however it makes sense for you. Uh, some popular options are going to be just by the affiliate type. So are they a coupon website? Are they a blogger? You can drill into specific types of blogs. If you are going to set up those different commission rates, you can set up tags that list out those commission rates easily for you to read. You can do it by performance if you would like, so you can also include that. Again, they can't see it, so you can name it anything that you would like to name it. Once you've set up the tags, you can also, in the report section that we'll go through next, drill in by those specific tags to view the data surrounding each individual tag you've set up. You'll also notice this little plus zero here. In my account, your account will probably have a variety of different numbers. This is something that is going to be important, especially when you're reviewing those pending applications. So this is the feedback score. So you can click on this number. You are able to provide feedback to the affiliates in your program. So it's either a positive review or a negative re review. And then you can view the previous reviews that have been left by other merchants in the network. So you'll be able to see when that review was left, whether it was positive or negative, and if they chose to leave a description. If you have strong feelings of any of the affiliates in your program, I would recommend that you do leave feedback for them. This is something that is helpful to them so that they know what they are doing well and what they need to work on. And it's also helpful to other merchants that come into the network so that they can see if these are going to be affiliates they, they would like to work with or not. You're also able to click on this little envelope icon here and you can send a one-on-one -on -one message to your affiliates at any time. This goes directly to their email. If they choose to respond, it will be sent to the email address on file for your account and you'll be able to continue the communication through your email. Also under the affiliate tab is another way that you can send a message to your affiliates through a newsletter. So a newsletter is a great way to send a message to all of the affiliates in your program. You can drill down into a specific group of affiliates if you would like as well. Uh, however, I do recommend that you send a message out to all of the affiliates in your program at least on a monthly basis to keep them engaged, to make sure they know what's going on in the program, provide them any updates, let them know new creatives have been uploaded, if you have any upcoming sales, things like that, that will just assist them with the promotion of your program. You're able to send them out as a text newsletter or an HTML newsletter. Once you drill into the newsletter editor, the top section will be where you can select the recipients. You can compose the message You'll also be able to utilize macros within here. So macros are going to be the same ones as the auto reply emails. They will assist you with adding in information to your newsletters. You're able to then preview that. You can send yourself a test of the newsletter to make sure it looks how you would like it to. And then you're able to finalize that for send. 
When you are on the step of finalizing your newsletter, it is important to make sure that you are 100% ready to go. Once a newsletter has been scheduled to be sent, we are unable to cancel that newsletter. So making sure again that you are 100% ready to go when you are scheduling to send that newsletter. If we go back to that main page for the newsletter editor, you'll also see where this full archive page is. Once you've begun sending out newsletters, if you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the information for the newsletters that you have sent out. You'll also be able to click on a section where you can view the data for these newsletters. So you'll be able to see how many affiliates it's been sent out to, the open rate for those newsletters, the bounce rate for those newsletters, and then even more specifically, which affiliates did open that. The open rate, it is important to know that we can only track open rate if you are sending out HTML newsletters. We are not able to track the open rate if you are sending out text newsletters, so if you want that open rate data, you do need to be sending out the HTML newsletters. Again, it is recommended that you send out these newsletters at least on a monthly basis. You can send them out more frequently if you would like. However, once a month is what is recommended in order to keep your affiliates engaged. Moving on to the last section here today, we're going to take a look at the reports section. One of the most frequently used reports is going to be this transaction detail report. This is going to have all of the transactions that are tracked through your account listed out with details for you to review. So you're able to see when that transaction was tracked, the time and the date, the order ID that corresponds with that. So the order ID is a number that you are sending to us through your tracking. Your transaction ID is a share sale specific number that is added to that transaction as it comes through. You can see the sale amount, the commission amount, if you hover over that, you can see the exact percentage, the share sale transaction fee, and then the total spend. As a reminder, the share sale transaction fee is a 20% fee of the commission paid. So that is going to be something that is tracked on each transaction that does come through your account. It is 20% of the commission paid to your affiliate on that one transaction. You can make any edits or voids to the transactions within the transaction detail report as well. Please note that all edits and voids, voids do need to be completed before the lock date. So under the sale amount, you're able to see the lock date. All transactions will lock on the 20th of the month following when they were placed. So all of the transactions that come through your account in April will lock on May 20th up until the 20th, so you have through the 19th to make any of those edits or voids. On the 20th, it is locked. The affiliate can officially withdraw those commission funds from their account, and no additional edits or voids can be made. So again, just making sure that you are making any edits or voids prior to the transaction locking. Also under reports is going to be the affiliate time span report. So the affiliate time span report is going to provide you with the data of what is coming in broken down by affiliate. So you can see at the very top of the page the top five affiliates by either clicks, commissions, sales, number of transactions. And then you can scroll down to see what each affiliate is bringing in for you. You can also add additional columns with this column manager here. If you would like to see additional information in the report. All of these reports you will be able to download a CSV file for them and you can filter in by a date range. You can drill down by the affiliates and like I said you can also drill down by those affiliate tags that you are setting up. A report that's going to provide you with similar data to the affiliate time span report is going to be the weekly progress report. However, in this report, it is broken down by individual day. 
so you can scroll down and see the clicks, sales, commissions that are coming in each day. And you can also, again, use the column manager to add additional columns. You can download that report if you would like and drill down by your affiliates or those specific tags. The ledger report is going to be a a report that you will want to review when it comes to your account balance. So it's going to show you all of the incoming funds and all of the outgoing funds from the account balance uh, broken down by each individual transaction with the total impact to your balance. You can also review the performance of each of the creatives that you have uploaded in the banner performance report. When you do go to this report, you will need to first filter it before you can review any of the data. So if I just click filter, leave it at what is automatically in there. Now I can see the clicks, commissions, sales broken down by each of the creatives in my account. The last report we're going to take a look at here is going to be the transaction breakout report. So the transaction breakout report is going to show you data for your transactions with three different metrics. So the first one is going to be mobile versus non-mobile sales. The second one is going to be coupon code. So as you can see here, this little pop-up error appears when I go to drill in to view that coupon metric. So this is a quick and easy way if you are unsure if you have coupon code data that is tracking through your account to see if that is occurring or not. So you can see based on this error message that I currently do not have coupon code tracking set up. If I would like to view the breakout based on coupon codes being used, I do need to have that set up. So what I need to do is I need to reach out to share a sale and I need to request that they walk me through the steps to add that coupon code tracking to my account. The last option is going to be a new versus existing customer metric, which you can see that an error message is popping up for this as well, letting me know that I'm not currently tracking new versus existing customer data. This is something that is just an update to the tracking as well. All I need to do is reach out and request that we do update the account with this information. That does bring us to the end of the Merchant Interface 101 webinar today. Thank you so much for joining me here. Please reach out to us again through the Help Center or by emailing or calling us. We are more than happy to assist you at any time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.